Dr. Rashid Batar, one of the leading truthers on the COVID-19 vaccine, died suddenly. Have you ever heard of the Center for Countering Digital Hate? The CCDH was founded in 2018 by Imran Ahmed. They've tried over the years to silence dozens and dozens of right-wing conspiracy theorists and journalists, such as Breitbart, Newsmax, The Washington Times, and The Daily Wire, just to name a few, as they claim they were toxic publishers. They've protested over the years that social media companies aren't doing enough to silence those with opposing views on topics such as COVID-19, climate change, and vaccines. On March 24th, 2021, the CCDH published a 40-page document taking aim at 12 of the most outspoken people with differing views on the COVID-19 vaccine. They coined these 12 individuals the disinformation dozen. The disinformation doesn't are responsible for up to 65% of the anti-vaccine content. Our analysis of over 812,000 posts extracted from Facebook and Twitter between February 1st and the 16th of March 2021 shows that 65% of anti-vaccine content is attributable by the disinformation dozen. The CCDH called for outright silencing of these 12 individuals. Deplatform the disinformation dozen. The most effective and efficient way to stop the disinformation dissemination of harmful information is to deplatform the most highly visible repeat offenders who we term the disinformation dozen. This should also include organizations these individuals control or fund, as well as any backup accounts they establish to evade removal. On the list was Joseph Maricola, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., Ty and Charlene Bollinger, Sherry Tenpenny, Riza Islam, Rashid Batar, Aaron Elizabeth, Sire G, Kelly Brogan, Christiane North. Martha, Ben Tapper, and Kevin Jenkins. Deplatform key anti-vaxxer organizations. In addition to deplatforming the personal accounts of the disinformation dozen, platforms must also acknowledge the real-world networks they use to spread their anti-vaccine message. This means deplatforming key organizations that are linked to the disinformation dozen or simply help spread their messages. The organizations include Children's Health Defense, Informed Consent Action Network, National Vaccine Information Center, Organic Consumers Association, and Millions Against Medical Mandates. Number six on that list is the topic of today's video, Dr. Rashid Batar. Rashid Batar was a doctor of osteopathic medicine and was born on January 20th, 1966 in London, England. He graduated from Des Moines University in Iowa. Dr. Batar was very outspoken and was never afraid to speak the truth despite the repercussions he may endure. And that was on full display when Dr. Batar was on CNN for an interview. Just days ago on May 20th, Dr. Batar's close friend and one of the disinformation dozen, Aaron Elizabeth broke the news that her good friend and truth seeker was dead. Less than 48 hours prior, she had Dr. Batar on her program for an interview. He seemed to be just fine and in good health, but he did have an ominous warning. possible that they could come for me because I'm very outspoken about it, but if you ever hear that something happened, that I died, I'm not depressed, I didn't commit suicide, I'm telling you right now that we need to stand up and fight. So just remember, if something happens to me, it's because I've been telling the truth and they don't want that truth to continue going out there. But I did not kill myself. I am not depressed. I'm very happy and I am very excited to be alive at this time in human history because this is the sign of the times. All the stuff that is bad is going away and all the truths are coming to light. Dr. Batar was not vaccinated. So what happened? The cause of death is unknown at this time, but Dr. Batar did state that he thought he was poisoned in the same interview with Aaron Elizabeth. People just remember, you know, that I went through a very difficult personal health challenge a few months I was in the ICU. I had been poisoned with this 200 times the amount of what's in the vaccinations. And I've said publicly, you know, you'd have to shoot me in the head with lead, um, i.e. a bullet, because I'm never going to take the vaccine. So. I was actually intentionally poisoned, and part of it was, I, I believe, right before that scene or right after that scene, an interview. Um, but regardless of what happened, uh, 
the, the message I want people to know is remember the, the, the importance of exercising free will. And then also as a default, as a backup, slow down and remember that God is in control. Here's a man, enemy number one for the left and big pharma. A number of news outlets bash Dr. Batar, saying he is the problem, with headlines like, will doctors who are spreading COVID-19 misinformation face penalty? Will doctor disinformation ever face the music? He streamed every week on his Twitter on the dot about a number of different topics. The main one, of course, was the COVID-19 vaccine. In fact, he streamed on May 16th, just days before he died suddenly. Am I the only one that thinks this is a little freaking weird? What happened to Dr. Batar, we may never know. But one thing is for sure, he was a truth seeker that will be missed greatly. Rest in peace to Dr. Batar. To learn more about my COVID-19 vaccine documentary, The Big Jab, go to thebigjabmovie.com.